Okay, you still have a chance to win the Mega Millions jackpot tonight. I'm not sure if they do because I'm planning on winning it. Oh, yeah, I didn't so, know that. Oh, so there you go. <laughs> well, it has ballooned another $200 million since Tuesday's no winner drawing, and that brings the total up to one and a quarter billion dollars. That is the fourth largest Mega Millions jackpot ever. Now, joining us now to break down your odds of actually winning that grand prize <laughs> is Mark Glickman. He's a senior lecturer on statistics at Harvard. Great to have a statistician involved in this discussion. So <laughs> what is the best strategy if somebody wants to win the big prize? Is there a strategy for winning the lottery? The best you can really do is just play lots and lots of times, and that's the only way that you're going to be able to increase your probability. What I like to explain to people, though, is that even though you cannot, on a single drawing, improve your chances, what you can do is invoke a strategy that actually increases your chance of not sharing the prize fund if you happen to win and multiple people also end up winning. So what you could do is rather than picking common numbers or patterns on tickets, what you should actually be doing is you should be taking like random numbers. You should just completely have patternless random numbers, no birthdays that are have special meaning to you because other people are likely to make those same picks. Fascinating. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah we, we, we always draw comparisons between the odds of winning lotteries and things like getting struck by a bolt of lightning and other unlikely events. Why do people still gamble with the Mega Millions when, statistically speaking, their chances are pretty abysmal? Yeah, well, the, the problem, I think, is if, if uh, somebody ends up playing the lottery, you know, on a regular basis, because the chance that you're going to win is so, so small. And if you just continue playing, you're going to end up just losing uh, in, in the long run. Um, so, you know, you, you, you really should, um, you know, sort of think about uh, the reasons that you're playing. Now, some, you know, I know Lana was saying that she's going to win the, the lottery tonight. Actually, I'm going to. Oh, Mark, so. you got it. All right. <laughs> Um, but but I, but I wanted to, uh, you know, make it clear that like when, uh, you know, th there's a responsible way to do this, which is, you know, like when the jackpot gets to be, you know, an extraordinary amount like it is right now, you know, it's, it's you know, fine to go out and have some fun and, you know, fantasize about uh, winning the lottery and, you know, take some of your discretionary money and, you know, buy a lottery ticket or two. But like, you know, you shouldn't make a habit of this and because that's just a losing proposition. But, you know, to, um, you know, compared to what you were talking about before, you know, playing the lottery and losing is not like getting struck by lightning. You know, the risks are not quite as bad if you end up losing. Well, I always, I think that you're winning because what you're doing is you're buying that moment of dreaming. And yeah. as long as that's how you're approaching it, then, then you've already won. All right. Mark, yeah, I'm Mark Glickman, appreciate and best of luck to you as well and to all of our viewers. I, I would say the same to you, but uh, <laughs> that would be disingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.